In this video, I'm going to discuss static instability, also called divergence. And while this is a short video, this is an incredibly important topic in structural engineering because, after all, the reason that we do structural analysis is so we can understand what the limits of a structure are and when it might diverge or fail. The starting point is, let's look at an inverted pendulum, some mass M, on an arm, well, maybe not quite so steep, on an arm of length L, and that's free to rotate about this point. And then, well, let me just draw the vertical. So this is an angle we'll call theta. And let's assume that we've got a torsional spring here. Uh, how do I want to draw this? Something like this. Whoops, it's not a great drawing. Something like this. So it's a torsional spring and works quite much like a linear spring as the mass uh, rotates. So the spring tries to restore that. And this spring has a stiffness K sub T torsional stiffness. Um, in addition, we'll assume that gravity is present in the problem, so we've got a, a force acting down, which is the weight, m times g. Let me add my gravity vector here. Okay, and then let me just fill in here that we're going to use this length here, which is the moment arm, which is L times sine of theta. Uh, maybe let me clear this up a little bit by putting L on the other side. Let's write L here. All right, so if we apply Newton's second law, we find that uh, we can write it as M L squared, which is the polar moment of inertia, or the rotatory moment of inertia of the mass or pendulum. Again, we're assuming that the, the rod or the... Uh, bar is massless. So ML squared times theta double dot, which is the MA term, is equal to the sum of the moments. Well, in the positive direction, we have MG, which is the force acting on this moment arm, L sine theta. So MG L sine of theta um, minus the force from the torsional spring. And it's minus because it's opposing theta. It's in the opposite direction of theta, uh, which is k sub t times theta. Now, we'll call that equation 1, but we can apply the small angle formula. So let's just assume that theta is very, very small, much less than 1. And this implies that sine theta is approximately equal to theta. So I can rewrite this equation of motion as ML squared theta double dot plus, and let's just group this, KT minus MGL times sine of theta, excuse me, times theta. Since we made the approximation that sine of theta is equal to theta. And we'll call this equation number two. All right, so the way we solve it is as usual, where we assume that theta is equal to some constant times e to the rt. This yields our characteristic equation, which says ml squared r squared plus kt minus mgl is equal to zero. That is the characteristic equation. And I'm speeding through this because we've seen this in a previous video, and the link appears above if you'd like to reference that. And then we have the roots R1 and 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of MGL minus K sub T divided by ML squared. Okay, now you remember from the previous video that in order for this to show simple harmonic motion, 
what is under the square root sign needs to be a negative. Another way of saying it is if we go back to equation 2, the, the uh, equation of motion, we know that the term or the coefficient of the term with the variable in it, not the derivative, but just the variable theta, that coefficient needs to be positive. If it's negative, we don't get simple harmonic motion. That needs to be positive. So I can imp I imply from this that, let me just give these numbers, 3, uh, 4, 5. Okay, so from equation 5, I can say that I'm just going to do it in blue here so we can keep it separate. So for stability, this means that M, G, L minus K sub T must be less than zero. And I'm saying strictly less than zero as opposed to less than equals two. Equals two would be borderline stable. Um, and from this, we can infer that kt, k sub t, must be greater than mgl. And I'm going to leave it as greater than, as I just said, because equal to is borderline stability. So for it to be unstable, kt, I mean, for it to be stable, excuse me, kt must be greater than mgl. And we can see this from the coefficient of this equation. As long as kt is greater than mgl, we're going to get simple harmonic motion. Well, what if kt is less than mgl? If kt is less than mgl, then this becomes a real number, right? Because the, the numerator is positives. That's a real number, which means the roots are both real and different, because one is positive, one is negative. And theta, we know, theta of t, is equal to c1 times e to the r1t plus c2e to the r2t. So again, if these roots are imaginary, we know that this yields simple harmonic motion. That would be a stable situation. If these roots are real, positive real roots, or one of the roots is positive, one's negative, the root that's positive, let's say it's R1, this term is going to blow up as time increases. So what happens, and let me just draw it up here so I can keep it on the same page, is you're going to just get exponential growth something that looks like this. If we assume that the y-axis is theta and the x-axis is time. All right, so just again, in summary, in order for us to have st static stability, or, or the point at which it becomes statically unstable, is when the coefficient of this term becomes negative. When that happens, and this is when kt is, greater, is, is less than mgl, it becomes negative, then what happens is you have two real, two real roots, one of which is positive. And because of that positive root, you get exponential growth. And this is the condition known as divergence. So when a system diverges, the displacements grow exponentially. And I'm stressing that because it's different to what happens in the case of dynamic instability, as we'll see in a future video, where the, uh, the displacement in, in dynamic instability grows linearly. Okay, so exponential, exponential growth happens in the case of divergence, which is a static instability. And that's the point I want to drive home here. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. I hope you found something useful in it. If you did, please would you go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd love to hear in the comments section below. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch up with you in the next video.